riding the healthy new space wave, there are quite a few startups trying to get a portion of the space launch market. When such a company claims to be developing novel tech, something groundbreaking, hardware that will be fully reusable and game-changing, well, it is reasonable to err on the side of caution and remain skeptical. Stoke Space, however, is not only claiming this, but actually is building and testing hardware according to its claims, and it's going at an amazing pace. They've even revealed plans to build an efficient rocket engine similar to the Raptors that power SpaceX's Starship. So where did they come from? And how are they building their rockets? Also, is there any chance for them to beat Elon Musk's SpaceX? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Stoke Space was founded by Andy Lapsa. Actually, the company benefited from gathering people from both Jeff Bezos' space ventures as well as from SpaceX. Lapsa worked for Bezos to develop the powerful BE-4 engine and then as director of Blue Origin's BE-3 program. I love Jeff's vision for space, Lapsa said in an interview. I worked closely with him for a while on different projects and I'm basically 100% on board with the vision. Beyond that, this is a polite way of saying that more than two decades after Bezos founded Blue Origin, the company has yet to reach orbit. So, four years ago, Lapsa, who is in his late 30s, and Tom Feldman, another rocket scientist there who had just turned 30, began to look around for a place to make a difference faster. They were animated, not so much by a midlife crisis, but by a desire to bring forward the era of low-cost regular access to space and the future that might unlock for humanity. The pair of propulsion engineers said they are looking for three key ingredients in a company. Rapid reusable rockets, the right engineering team, and a history of habitual execution. SpaceX pretty much had it all, as the company's primary focus was on the revolutionary reusable Starship rocket. It possessed arguably the largest and most talented team of rocket engineers in the world, and no one flew more often or more dazzlingly. But yet, it wasn't for them. They unquestionably have an amazing history of execution of awe-inspiring stuff that has absolutely transformed our industry, Lapsa said. But I do think there's room for a different style of the company. We talk a lot with people who come out of SpaceX after 3, 5, 10, or even 15 years, and they're shells of their old selves. They're burnt out. So, at the end of 2019, Lapsa and Feldman decided to found their own company, Stoke Space. Neither had experience raising money or running a business. They had no plan or no specific design for their rocket in mind. Rather, they had a strong conviction that the future they wanted wasn't happening, but it was there for the taking. The startup had just five employees, no permanent workspace, and a barren field for a test site. But within 18 months, Stoke Space had turned that empty field into an impressive test facility, conducted numerous component tests, and assembled its first full-scale rocket engine, an exotic UFO-like device unlike any seen before. It also raised another $65 million, which is enough funding to begin earnestly developing a potentially revolutionary rocket capable of launching more than 1.65 tons. That's around 3,600 pounds into orbit for less than half a million dollars. To realize that extremely ambitious goal, Stoke Space has taken the even more ambitious step of attempting to make the first rocket it develops fully reusable. Simultaneously, the company has incorporated several exotic technologies into that rocket, recently culminating in a surprise announcement that it will attempt to develop one of the most difficult types of engines to power that rocket's booster stage. At the end of an extended interview and tour with YouTuber Tim Dodd, otherwise known as the Everyday Astronaut, CEO Andy Lapsa revealed that Stoke Space has decided to build a full-flow staged combustion engine for the first stage of its reusable rocket. A full-flow staged combustion engine is the most efficient type of combustion cycle available for a chemical bipropellant rocket engine. 
but it's also the most difficult to develop. An FFSC engine attempts to squeeze every possible ounce of performance out of the propellant it consumes. The most powerful and efficient chemical rocket engines must consume huge volumes of propellant in a short amount of time without destroying the launch vehicle they're attached to. To create pressure and spin the pumps that are needed to feed that propellant into their main combustion chamber, engines often burn a small amount of propellant in a separate gas generator or preburner. Gas generator engines vent that exhaust overboard, reducing efficiency but making for a much simpler design. Staged combustion engines use preburners to create gas that pumps liquid propellant, and that exhaust gas is eventually injected into the main combustion chamber. Full flow staged combustion sets itself apart by having two separate pumps and preburners for oxidizer and fuel. Unlike simpler variants of staged combustion, FFSC engines turn all of their their propellant into gas before injecting it into the combustion chamber. That hot gas increases the heat of combustion and the pressure inside the combustion chamber, ensuring that virtually all of the propellant that flows through the engine is combusted and turned into thrust as efficiently as possible. An FFSC is exceptionally difficult because of the extra high temperatures and pressures it requires, as well as the need for an oxygen oxygen-rich preburner and pump. In a high-pressure, hot oxygen environment, virtually anything imaginable, including most metals, will spontaneously combust. Only complex, custom-designed alloys can survive those conditions. SpaceX's Raptor, the only FFSC engine that has ever flown, is especially difficult because it's meant to be highly reusable. To be successful, Raptor will have to survive those conditions dozens or even hundreds of times in a row with little to no maintenance in between. The first booster engine Stokes Space ever attempts to build will be a reusable, full-flow staged combustion engine powered by liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which will essentially be a smaller version of SpaceX's Raptor. Stokes' booster is otherwise familiar and features deployable landing legs like SpaceX's Falcon boosters. Lapsa says it will likely also have grid fins. In some ways, the upper stage of Stokes' first rocket is even more ambitious. Powered by hydrogen and oxygen propellant, Stoke has designed a conical capsule-like upper stage with an integral fairing. The upper stage's propulsion is exotic and unique. A large pump will feed propellant to up to 30 combustion chambers distributed around the rim of its heat shield. The exhaust coming from those 30 chambers will expand and partially push against the upper stage's equally exotic metallic liquid-cooled heat shield. That expansion against the heat shield improves the efficiency of the upper stage and means that its engines will technically be an aerospike. Stoke has already begun testing a full-scale version of the upper stage's UFO-like rocket engine with 15 combustion chambers. Since testing began in the second half of 2022, Stoke has completed dozens of static fires. Everyday Astronauts Tour also revealed that the startup has made significant progress fabricating and assembling its first full-scale upper stage prototype. Tanks, nose cone, heat shield, engine, and all. Reminiscent of SpaceX's Grasshopper and Starhopper campaigns, Stoke plans to conduct hop tests with that prototype if it makes it through qualifications testing. On February 7th, Stoke also revealed that it's begun testing a crucial component of its full-flow booster engine. When all said and done, it's impossible for them to keep up with the most powerful private rocket company in the world, SpaceX. But Stoke Space is making progress at a remarkable pace and continues to tackle the hardest problems. The startup has also avoided widely publicizing any specific deadlines, instead choosing to let hardware and tangible results speak for themselves. Only time will tell if that approach pays off, but Stoke is off to an exceptionally impressive start in an industry full of impressive rocket startups. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.